where we've uh, been racking our brains for the right answers to those questions. Some of us less successfully so than others. But often in life, it's not so much about knowing the right answers as asking the right questions. The questions that are the really important ones. As we emerge from lockdown, we've all got uh, important, urgent questions. Uh, where can I get my hair cut? Less of an issue for me uh, these days. Where can we go on holiday? When will we will be able to see our family? But are those the most important questions to be asking? After all, over this past year, we've been shown that what a, a lot of what we fill our lives with is so short term. Uh, so much froth, if it can be so easily taken away, brought to a halt by a tiny little virus, then just how substantial, how significant is it, if so quickly blown away? Interestingly, in the early days of lockdown, a survey was done amongst young adults on their mental health, and it found that when everything was taken away, they were less anxious, less stressful. Their fear of missing out was gone when nobody was doing anything. Now, I know it changed uh, later on, but what does it say about those things that we fill our lives with if life is better when they are uh, taken away? And of course, this past year, every day, we've been reminded of just how fragile life is as the uh, uh, coronavirus daily death toll has brought a reminder of death into our living rooms, not through the uh, um, fiction of midsummer murders, but through cold, hard government statistics. So the question we must be asking, the most important question for us to ask, is one that Jesus was once asked by a young man who approached him and said, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Or as we might say, if there is something beyond this life, then how do I qualify? That's the question that as we emerge from lockdown, we surely must be asking. We've been shown how much of our lives is so much froth, might be enjoyable, but hardly worth living for. More than that, we've been shown just how fragile life itself is. So the most important question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? That life that is beyond this life. At first sight, Jesus' reply seems rather strange. Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. He's offering this man a reality check. You call me good teacher, but what is your standard of good? Because only God is properly good. Maybe you and I need that same reality check. Maybe you say, I'm a good person. If there's a heaven, I'll be there. Now, I'm sure the inhabitants of the Wirral are a lot more pleasant than the rogues of Wilmslow. Uh, don't tell them that I said that. But frankly, that's irrelevant. We can always find someone worse than we are. If not in our street, then at least in the newspaper. But God is completely good. 100% good. You've probably done a lot better. Uh, than me. But the truth is that none of us are anywhere near God's standard of good. And then Jesus says to him, you know the commandments, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, do not defraud, honour your father and mother. Teacher, he replies, all these I've kept since I was a boy. He's very respectable. He has led a decent, upright life. He's exactly the sort of person that many of us would love to be. He is your ideal son-in-law. But at this point, Jesus offers 
a second reality check. Those commandments he quoted were all from the second half, numbers five to nine of the ten, ones that are on the uh, horizontal, about how we treat other people. And outward at least, he'd done really well on those. He was a model citizen. But what about numbers one to four? The ones that Jesus doesn't mention. Having no other gods. Not putting anything in the place that rightfully belongs to God and so on. And at this point, Jesus lovingly offers that second reality check. One thing you lack, go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Treasures on earth or treasures in heaven? It should have been a no-brainer if heavenly treasures forever were on offer. But this man couldn't do it. We're told that he went away sad because he had great wealth. His money was his God. That's what he trusted in. That's what he was living for. He'd pushed God away and replaced him with a cheap alternative. Now the disciples uh, don't understand. Surely uh, riches were a sign of God's favour. Who then can be saved, they ask. If this morally minded man, seemingly blessed by God, can't be saved. What hope is there for anybody? Jesus replies, with man this is impossible. Left to ourselves we can't make our own way to heaven. Some of us are painfully aware that we've not lived up to our own standards, let alone God's. And like this man, we've put other things in the place that belongs to God. It might not be money, it might be career, or reputation, or a chosen lifestyle, or simply doing things as I choose. Things which at first seem to promise so much, but which sooner or later take hold of us, always demanding more. More time, more effort, more devotion. Like this man and his money, trapped by the God that he had made. But deep down, knowing that it hadn't delivered, after all he's asking, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Life as it was meant to be. Are you asking the most important question? It's the most important question that we can ever ask. But, says Jesus, it is a question which is impossible for us to answer. With man, this is impossible. There's nothing we can do to inherit eternal life. We can't reach God's level of good. We can't set ourselves free from the gods that have taken hold. But here's the good news. Jesus says, but not with God. All things are possible with God. What is impossible for us is possible for God. Through the death of Jesus on a cross, God has done everything necessary to make eternal life available as a gift to receive rather than a reward that we can never achieve. Jesus has met the standard of God's goodness on our behalf though so that we might receive eternal life as a gift. More than that, only God can change our hearts, set us free from the fleeting treasures of earth, so that we might say yes to following Jesus. Yes to the treasures of heaven. Please don't turn away from Jesus tonight, as this young man did. That is the way of sadness and eternal loss. Instead, will you ask God to change your heart, to set you free from those false gods that have taken hold? 
and to turn instead to Jesus, the Lord who brings life, eternal life. I'm going to uh, pray a prayer along those lines. If it's uh, appropriate, then please make it your own. Dear God, I'm sorry that I have put other things in the place that is rightfully yours. Thank you that Jesus has done everything necessary for us to receive eternal life as a gift. Please change my heart to no longer resist you, but to welcome Jesus as the one who rightfully deserves first place in my life. Amen. If you're interested in finding out more, or if you made that uh, prayer your own, why not invite uh, speak to the person who invited you this evening about uh, what the church here has on offer to help you. Thank you.